and it has to be this one. If it's not this one, all this falls down. So if, if you want, this theory is more strange to you than this one, so let's call that electric. But I don't think there is much uh, big logic behind it. A any other questions or comments? This is boring. By the way, did people knew this from the top of their minds? Did you know this? Yes? Uh, yeah, you didn't learn it in Swansea, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, uh, Pascal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do this at undergraduate level. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so, um, so let, let's 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 come back here. So, what I okay? Th there are different things I would like to say. The first one, the first one for those of you who are not familiar with this, is that this thing that I put here called string tension, or if, if, if the inverse of string tension actually is, is this alpha prime is one of the numbers that are free parameter in the string theory, so it's proportional to the string length square, so it has units of length square. <coughs> notice then, and, and this I want to notice at this point because it's just a technical subtlety but it will, it will re-emerge at some point. Notice that if this has units of length square, and this has units of length square, then the thing between the brackets should have units of nothing, right? And since this time x is etc. have units of length square, they are square. <coughs> Here you have a length square. This should have a unit of one over length square. <coughs> Notice that this should have no units because this is dimensionless, dimensionless, dimensionless. So the r square, in, in spite of me being calling it, calling it r at this stage, this r square has no units. Right? So this is just a, a short comment of units. So what this is telling you is that this u that I'm calling radial coordinates has actually units of one over length square. Or if you want, uh, sorry, one over length, uh, or if you want units of mass, okay? So this radial coordinate u, very strangely, has units of uh, energy, okay? So th this is just a point I would like, just to stress at this point, but it will, it will reappear in a, in a more interesting fashion. But okay, uh, at this stage, if you look at this, what you see here is, okay, space that those of you who recognize it uh, know this is anti the Sitter 5 space. If you take one coordinate, it's anti the Sitter 4. If you take two coordinates, it's anti the Sitter 3, et cetera, et cetera, right? So the, the, there is nothing particular about uh, the number of things you have here. It's going to be anti the Sitter. And okay, here is five sphere, and as you were remarking, you don't need, for, for, for this particular example or to understand anything about this, the, the particular metric that goes here, if you know the metric of the two sphere, believe me, you know the one of the five sphere, it's just a generalization. <coughs> so let me say a couple of things about this metric <coughs> and, and about the string theory, actually, uh, that I, I said very quickly in, in, the previous, in the previous hour. So let me recapitulate a couple of things. When you are studying the type to be string theory, and you are studying the type to be string theory in what's called the low energy approximation, so if you want, let, let me make this point, the point particle approximation. Point particle and <coughs> non-quantum. version of the string theory, you are studying what's called supergravity. So notice that the, the, there are two, two properties of the string theory that are being taken out. The first one are the quantum mechanics of the string theory, and the second one are the uh, properties that come because the string theory is a theory of strings, right? So, so extended objects. 
when you take out those two properties, they, they can th that can be done by taking particular limits of the parameters of the theory, you're studying what people call type 2b supergravity. <coughs> and this type 2b supergravity has a, a, a bunch of fields. One of them is symmetric. <coughs> Another is scalar that people call dilaton. <coughs> Another one is um, the a generalization of a Maxwell field that instead of having two legs like a typical Maxwell field has three okay. but, but the definition is, is very similar right so uh, and, and all the cyclic permutations of this So what, what you would write in this way, actually. <coughs> so, so this type of separator has a metric, a scalar field, a, a, a Maxwell-like field with three legs, <coughs> and then a Maxwell-like field with three legs again, a Maxwell-like field with five legs, and a Maxwell-like field with one leg, or if you want, another scalar that is actually a pseudo-scalar, from which you can construct something that you would call a Maxwell-like field, but with one leg. So these are, these are all the fields of, the, of this type to be supergravity. And when and, and, and basically, this, this has complicated equations of motion. By, by the way, I, I, I had very detailed notes of the equations of motions of this, etc. If any of the students wants to see those notes, uh, I, I have them, right? So it, it's just a very detailed derivation of how this method comes about, etc. If, if any of you wants to see it, just ask me and, and you make copies or, or I leave you the notes. I have a PDF on that. so. It, but but I, I, I don't think it's worthwhile to, to spend one hour discussing the, the particular equations of motion of each one and how that comes out as a solution. <coughs> at, at any rate, uh, when, when you study those equations of motion, <coughs> well, the, the, the equations are complicated, so, so th there are <coughs> Einstein's equations. <coughs> For the metric, <coughs> there are Maxwell, <coughs> Maxwell-like equations and Bianchi identities for for all these forms. There is a Kling-Gordon-like. By the way, I, I, I should emphasize this point that I, I was forgetting. This type to be string theory in this point particle and classical approximation gives something that is called type to be supergravity that contains these bosonic fields plus two fermionic fields. People call them gravitino and dilatino. Okay, so this is just nomenclature in supergravity. Usually when people consider solutions, they are considering, if you want, let me say it in this way and we can discuss it more if needed, classical solutions to the equations of motion. So solutions where the fermions are put to zero. Okay? So <coughs> that's why in these equations, though I should count them, the Dirac equation of this one and the uh, it's called the uh, right finger for for the gravitino they are automatically satisfied is the a zero equal zero okay right so so th these ones people don't even look at them because they are always thinking that you are going to find configurations where these fields are taken to be zero 
there is a very good logic for this that we can discuss offline. At any rate, what I was saying is that when you are faced with these equations, they are in general nonlinear, <coughs> couple second order differential equations, right? second order from here and here, coupled because they are coupled and nonlinear because okay, these are nonlinear by themselves. This will be nonlinear, there are interaction terms, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's in principle always very difficult to solve this, this system unless you make a, a, a very good answer. The very good answers <coughs> in, in particular cases is just to keep some fields, right? Keep some fields and not all of them. In, in this particular case, the fields that you are keeping are the metric and this five form and all the rest zero. Okay? Or, or a constant. A, a constant solves the equation for, for many of them. <coughs> so, the, the point that I wanted to say or to add here, oh, this one, the point that I wanted to add is that actually this thing here is, is a background solution to the equations of motion of the, of the string theory, and this particular background contains a metric of the form that I wrote there. And contains a five form <coughs> of a particular form that, that here it comes. And, and this I wanted, this is the point I wanted to, to, to make. This five form will need to contain two components. Okay. Let, let me avoid it, those of you who don't know it, the, the technical subtleties. We need to contain two components. One where the legs are. in these directions, this one and this one, and another where the legs are in the five axis. Any choice that is not this one will break the symmetries we are interested in preserving here, right? That in, in hindsight, let, let me say this way. So any choice that, for example, suppose that you mistakenly propose something like this, right? If you mistakenly propose something like this, this will break the symmetries of rotation of the phi sphere, right? Uh, and, and, uh, and I will make the point that you do not want that. If you mistakenly propose something like this, <coughs> this will not only break the symmetries of rotation of the phi sphere, because you are picking some angles in, instead of other, but you will also be breaking the, the Lorentz symmetries in there. So, so uh, this is the only combination that, that will make the, the job uh, nice. <coughs> okay, so, so now let me, let me go a bit over the, 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 the symmetries of, of this metric, the isometries of this metric. <coughs> the, the group of isometries of A D S phi is SO two comma four. Actually the group of isometries of any A D S P with the conformal group, you will recognize, as, as we said before, <coughs> this is the conformal group in four dimensions. And in principle, any ADS in any dimension will be associated, or, or you could associate it, with a conformal group in one dimension less. Okay. So this is the conformal group in uh, P plus one, uh, P dimensions, okay? Dimensions. 
So, so I, I'm saying this in hindsight, it, it will reappear in, in, a, in a different place, uh, at least just as a comment. Uh, what I mean to say is, look, if you would like, in, uh, now let me make a comment that is completely uh, out of, out of uh, context. Now, if you would like to study conformal theory in three dimensions, right? Forget, for just, just take a, a, a material such that its properties are like uh, confining itself to a plane, right? <coughs> and, and you discover for some reason that you can describe that material with a conformal field theory, so you would like to study conformal field theory in three dimensions, two plus one, well, probably you can do it with an ADS4, right? Uh, two dimensions with an ADS3, etc., etc. So that's, that's just a comment in hindsight. It, it will resurface at some point during the, the, the rest of the lecture. Good. <coughs> there is another isometric of this part of the metric. <coughs> that are the rotations on the phi sphere. The group is SO6. And there is something that I very badly forgot to say here. That is the fact that, and let me see now how I bring this back in. No, no, you have to do it. Uh, uh, tell me. This? Well, the, no. P push the down button for number two. Push the down button for number two. Which is down button? This. This. For number two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that's two. So <coughs> let, let, let me come back a bit here and, and something that I completely forgot to say. You see, I, I was saying, look, in this n equals 4 super mean theory, you have a gauge field for fermions 6 scales, right? The field theory is very symmetric, field theory, etc., etc., And that makes that instead of having the conformal group, uh, the, 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 the Lorentz group as a group of isometries, it, it actually is a conformal theory. By the same token, it has a very interesting symmetry that is the possibility of rotating these six scalars among themselves, or these four fermions among themselves. So this isometry, I will call it SO6. <coughs> it's what people in quantum field theory call, call an R symmetry. Okay? So if you're not familiar with R symmetries, never mind. But it, it's just think it as a flavor symmetry in QCD. It's not exactly the same, but, but more or less. More or less than, than more, but okay. It's, it's, a, it's a global symmetry, it's just a global symmetry. So you see how, <coughs> and now, yes. Uh, <coughs> you see how, you see how, the symmetries that were global symmetries here, global symmetries here, this SO24, this SO6, are appearing as isometries in here, right? And, and you see this was one of the things that I was saying, this matching of global symmetries. Okay, on the other side you have a theory of gravity, you have to match with an isometry, right? <coughs> so so uh, uh, the whole point I'm trying to make, and I'm making it very badly, and, and I guess many of the people in the audience know this very well, is that in principle this, this duality that Mandacena proposed, that you may say, well, this is completely, this cannot be, actually it doesn't fail immediately, right? Actually it doesn't fail not only, not immediately, it, but at least the immediate things you should look at, it does not fail. So you see, these global symmetries are here, <coughs> this global symmetry, <coughs> the supersymmetry, is also here because it happens that this particular solution <coughs> can be seen preserves supersymmetry and preserves precisely the same number as that theory preserves. If, if you are not familiar or if you are puzzled by the fact that a solution without fermions still preserves supersymmetry, it's, it's an offline discussion, but we, we can have it. Uh, 
It's, it's just a technical point, very interesting, but uh, let me not have it now. If we can do it after, after the lecture or tomorrow, whatever. <coughs> Good. A any questions about this? Am I saying something? Uh, I, I, I know it's a very heterogeneous audience, so if you have any question, something that, that I'm overlooking to say, etc., please, it's the moment to, to cry now. Enrico? So on the right hand side you have a classical theory or? On the right hand side, here. Uh, I mean, it is progressive. In the very good, very good. I'm, I'm going exactly into this point. Okay. So, so your point is, um, your point is, well, this is typically a quantum mechanical theory. Is that a classical theory? Very good. Any other questions? This is a very interesting question. We are going to spend the next 15 minutes on that, and that will be the end of it. Uh, any other questions or comments? Same? Okay, okay. very good. Very good. <coughs> okay, so let me raise something here. Just let me raise this, perhaps. One something else that I want to say before I go into this very interesting point. <coughs> I was saying that aside from the metric, you have this field with uh, five, five legs. If you use Gauss's law, the, the one that we learn in electrodynamics, <coughs> and now we're going to see why. This is this is Gauss's law. So so the, the way you can think about it is is the following. <coughs> you see, in, in electrodynamics we have a point particle in our, in our space, right? Our, our electrodynamics. We have a point particle, a charge, something like a radial direction and a two sphere. This is our space, right? So we see three dimensions. We have a, a radial direction and a two sphere. And what we do is the integral of the electric field on that two sphere, and this gives us the charge that we have in there. Yeah? Okay, this, this we are very used to. Okay? Actually, we could write this. In this way, right? Okay? And, and this is just one of the questions that are written on the floor in there. This is a... Right? Very good. Suppose now that what you have <coughs> is not a point particle, but a four-dimensional object. <coughs> if you want, something that covers all of our space <coughs> directions and time, right? And you shrink this object to a point. OK? By the way, this object as we are saying, it's an object living in the string theory. So we are shrinking to a point, this four-dimensional object. What will happen is that you will have a radial direction and a phi sphere. Right? So just, just in analogy, the thing is that our space has three space dimensions, and this one will have nine space dimensions. Right? So, so this four-dimensional space-time object is shrunk to a point, and what you'll see outside it is a radial a radial coordinate and a phi sphere. This is clear, just in analogy. Right? So it will happen that here again you will have a Gauss's law. <coughs> if you want, with this. Uh, and this will be with an element of the of, of the surface there. Something like this. And, and this integral you would like to impose and this is something that you will impose, <coughs> uh, is equal to a quantized number. Right? So just, just like here, you impose that this is a quantized number. In the appropriate units, this, this flies away. So you will impose that this is a quantized number. Right? This number, that you will impose it to be, <coughs> can be thought in, in retrospective. And then again, I'm saying this in a very disordered way. Much more order is 
in, in these notes when I look at equations, derive the equations, and, and look at it in, in detail, but, but just go with me. This number, you can think it as the number of objects that are generating this, this, this metric, right? The number of charges that are generating this metric, if you want. This number of objects, this number of charges is the number of the three brains uh, that are generating. Uh, these, these three brains are just some objects in the type to be string theory are generating this, this, this particular bug. <coughs> okay. So if you impose this, if you impose this thing, this is something that you need to impose. It will pull out for you a relation between what I'm calling here the radius of the space and this number NC. <coughs> and this relation is the following. Uh, um, all this is in units, so uh, there are two ways of saying this. Either I keep this in this form or I say, look, the dimension full radius of the space in terms of the only dimension full quantity is related to this. Okay? Right? So, so in here, I'm using this R square, and I'm saying it's dimensionless. So in that case, this is what I should write. Okay? If you reinstate the units by putting this in here, if you want, right? There or in there, <coughs> this is the relation. And, and if this is more or less uh, believable, uh, if not, let's, let's pause here. But uh, if this can be understood, more or less how will it come out, we are an epsilon from the discussion. Okay. Is this OK? Yes? Good. Good. So, so now let's, let's go to the discussion he wanted to have. That is, how is the? How is this? This is a quantum theory. Is that a classical or a quantum theory? saying something like the radius of the space compared to the natural length of the theory is up to factors of phi this top couple. Let me remind the top couple is defined <coughs> in this way. Okay? So so you may think to define this for phi G string to be the G of this. And these are just definitions, and believe me, they are correct, but uh, le let's not get stuck in the numbers. <coughs> and this lambda is the coupling of the four dimensional quantum field theory, n equals four superiorities in this case. Okay? Right? So this is the top coupling of the field theory. And, and, and this alpha prime, remember, is related to the square of the string length. Okay. So this alpha prime tells you about the, the length of the string. Very good. So I would like to plot two very different situations. <coughs> One in which that this top coupling, this lambda top, is, is, a, is a number, it's a pure number, it has no units. So when we say very big or very small, we are comparing to one, right? This is just a number. Okay? So, so if you want, what I'm trying to 
plot here is what happens when in the field theory we are in this situation and lambda is very small or we are in that situation and lambda is very large. Okay. So <coughs> notice the following. <coughs> if this lambda is very big, this is telling us that the radius, the characteristic distance in the space, the radius of the space is much, much bigger than the, uh, the length of the string. Is that good? Okay. So you will have a situation like this. This is your space and this is your string. Yes? If lambda is very small, <coughs> you will have a situation actually, where <coughs> this is your space and this is your string. Or worse. Or worse. I, is this clear? Yeah? So notice that what you are saying is the following. <coughs> if you are going to believe this equality between these, these two theories, what you are saying is that if the quantum field theory, this one, right, the four-dimensional quantum field theory, the one that looks like any field theory we have studied up to technical subtleties, is very strongly coupled, then the string theory side is such that you could replace all the complications of the string theory by a point particle theory. Okay? Right? So the, what I mean by this is that you could approximate the string theory on a space where the space is much bigger than the strings by the point particle approximation to the string theory. Is that, is that idea clear? Yes? That is going to, to, if you want, the classical limit of the string theory. Right? So what I'm saying in other words is that if you want to learn about the very strongly coupled quantum field theory, you will be able to learn by doing a classical computation on that side. Okay? Uh, and you see how, why this is powerful, right? Because you translate a very quantum mechanical calculation into just a classical calculation, okay? Conversely, <coughs> if, if you are in this situation where your top coupling is small, <coughs> and, and in that case, it would be very simple to compute perturbatively in the field theory, right? Your string theory will be complicated to compute because you will have to take into account all the effects of the string being an extended option. Okay? Right? This is, by the way, what is called <coughs> working with the sigma model of the string theory. Not that it's impossible, it's just complicated, very complicated. Okay? This is what is called working with the supergravity approximation. There is yet one more subtlety that I will say now, and we can go over it tomorrow. <coughs> that is the following. Notice that in both these examples, <coughs> or, 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 let's let's say it from here. Let's say it from here. <coughs> we are saying we can have lambda two very small. Very large. Well, so then, then you can ask me, okay, look, it's going to be very small. What's going to happen? Is this small and this small and that makes one small? Or is this very small and this large but this is much smaller, right? So it's the problem. Okay, so always, always here, you will be working in this limit. So this is this is the, this is the important thing. You will be working in the limit in which G string, or if you want, let me say it like this, G and mean square, is going to go to C. <coughs> you will always be working in the limit in which NC is going to go very large. Right? And it will happen that this product is either small or large. Right? You can tune one and the other, both of them going small and large, but it, it is this product the one that will characterize your system. <coughs> the reason why I'm saying this, and again we can go over this in detail tomorrow if needed, is that <coughs> I 
quantum gravity corrections. Will scale like one over nc squared. Right? I, I, I can tell you with the terrible there. So the, the way you would like to operate here is the following. You would like, because it's very difficult to compute, uh, very, very difficult to compute, to not have to compute quantum gravity corrections. Right? So not to have to work with the quantum mechanical theory of strings. Right? In other words, you would like not to have to do, for those of you who are initiating the thing, the genus expansion. Okay? You would like to avoid that. So you will always take nc to infinity, and this will uh, do away with these corrections. Then you could decide <coughs> to work in the strong coupling for the quantum field theory, and this will imply that you are tuning this probe such that this quantity lambda is large, and that will put you into working with this side of the duality, the string theory side of the duality, in the point particle and classical approximation. Right? So there is no quantum mechanics, and you could consider your string as a point particle. Okay? That's, that's working the supergravity approximation. You may be more, <coughs> more pushy or more uh, ambitious, and you may want to work in the case in which this is not very large, in which case you will have to work with what people call the, the, the sigma model for the string theory on ADS phi process phi. So you will not be able, you will be able to ignore this kind of corrections. You will not be able to ignore the fact that the string is an extended option. So one would have effective field theories for all the particles that arise when the string is a Say it again, say it So one in the string, in the sigma model. In this case. In that case. Have effective uh, field theories for all the particles that arise in the string. Yes, let, let me say it in this way. What you will have is a two dimensional model, that is the sigma model, right? And working with that, quantizing that sigma model, <coughs> notice not doing the genus expansion of that sigma model. You will not work it on the torus, etc., etc., just the genus zero. You will learn a lot about this field theory, at, at this perturbative field theory. Uh, yes, am I saying uh, I'm saying the same? I think. Okay. A any, any comments about this? I know people in the audience uh, know this very well. So, if I'm saying something slightly misleading in a misleading way, just say it. Don't don't let me mislead young people. So I thought it's G S going to zero that you want to avoid the genus expansion. Right? Yes. 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 So so this one is to kill the quantum mechanics because it's difficult. Okay. okay. Right. That's that nobody knows, so let's avoid it. Okay? Especially in this Ramon Bacros, etc. This one, okay, this this will kill this this correction for you if you want. Okay? And and okay, is this. But this one, you need also this product to be either small or large. Okay? What what will happen? <coughs> there's another way of saying this, that is that if you look at your sigma model, your expansion parameter in your sigma model will be related to this lambda, right? So your sigma model will be strongly coupled or weakly coupled according to the field theory being weakly or strongly coupled, okay? Uh, I'm saying this because there is one very interesting example in ADS-5 process 5, example I, I, I'm not going to talk about, but I can tell you a very nice review written by, by Jan <coughs> around 2008. For a very particular example where a for loop calculation in this case is matching a equal number of loops calculation in this case, which is, I, I, I would say, a very remarkable achievement. Do you expect loop by loop? Uh, uh, you know, in, in this, okay, let me tell you this, this I, I got from, from Yannick, from Yannick, uh, in, in conversation, so at least I'm quite sure of what I'm going to say. The calculation in the string theory is much simpler than the field theoretical calculation, right? So I don't know how is the matching, but, but I know they can compare loops because now the people who do the string theory side are one loop more 
than the people that do the fifty degrees side. But this is five loops, right? So the, 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 it's a precision that is remarkable. Yeah. Right? So, so the rest of the lectures will not go into those super interesting subtleties, mostly because I, I cannot talk about those things, but just read them and, and, and be admired. I, I will try to go more into things a bit more applied. Uh, we'll start discussing tomorrow. Any other questions or comments about what we discussed today? Uh, so the last last thing that you were saying that I mean why why do you expect that the uh, I mean loop, loop expansions to work all the way on or on both sides? Is there any reason for it? I mean you would no. would, would expect that no. your answers no. would, would match at the no, end. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but why would? Yeah. I, I I I wouldn't say that is three loops in field theory uh, and the same three loops in the sigma model. Yeah, but yeah. I mean the. I mean, the fact that the, the match is a little strange. No, the, no, the thing that work. No, 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 no it's, it's not strange. Right? It, it should, right? If the look, the, the the great achievement of this is that this matching is for a particular quantity in a particular operator that is not protected by symmetries, right? So that's that's the great achievement because you can always say, and this we will make the point tomorrow. Many things in this duality, many, many, many things will work just because they cannot not work, okay? <laughs> uh, which is non-trivial in any case, because the, the duality, as you can see, is, is non-trivial. But, but in retrospective, many things could not have not worked. Okay, good, good. So th they are typically associated, as you know, with what are called protected quantities, etc., etc. This particular one that I mentioned is not a protected point. So this is the thing that this could have failed if probability one were the conjecture wrong, and, and you see it does not. So I would say there is a strong degree of truth in, in all this. Can you remind me what's the expansion parameter when you do the sigma model? Yeah, it's, it's the inverse of lambda, as far as I remember. If not, I'll have to think about it. But so, well, it's, it's the inverse of lambda. Yeah. It, it has to be right. Any other questions or comments? Thank you very much. We'll meet tomorrow when Jose says. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know. Uh, it's in the. Uh, bye bye.